Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go through the semi-structured retrieval augmented generation. In my earlier videos, when I create the chart with documents, for example, let's say the PDF example, many of you mentioned in the comment section that, okay, PDFs might contain tables also. And does the RAG implementation extract the information from the tables or not, right? So we are going to solve that problem here with the help of LangChain with some additional tools. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the on structure to parse both the text and the tables from the documents. So in this case, it will be of the PDF. And then we will be using the multi vector retriever from LangChain. So how does it work is it stored the raw tables text along with the table summaries better suited for retrieval, right? And then we will be using the LangChain expression language to implement the chains we have used so this is the diagram how we will be implementing let's say that document is uh, our pdf file and we are using the on structure and if you don't know what is on structure you can just go through these links here i will not cover that in this video but what it does is with the help of that on structure we split as it's shown in the figure here and it is passed into the llms and we have the embed and there is table summary and the text summary. And out of that, we are going to use the multi vector retriever. So, what happens here is it retrieves the raw tables and text out of that. And that is again passed to the LLM. And finally, we get the answer. There are many things we need to cover. But when we go through the code, you will get the idea how it is being implemented. Let's get started. Okay. As before, I'm now in the Google Colab. And first thing first, we need to install some packages. So with this line of code, we can install the packages. And one thing you need to remember here is that in order to do the PDF partitioning by ONI structure, we need to have the Tesseract for optical character recognition OCR things. And we need the Poplar for PDF rendering and processing. If you are in Mac, you can just use Brew to install that. But if you are using Linux or if you are using same as me in the Google Colab, you can just run this line here sudo apt get install poplar utils and tesseract ocr once this is done we can go to the data loading part we are just going to use the llama 2 pdf i mean the llama 2 paper and we are going to use the on structured partition pdf which segments of pdf document by using the layout model so you will just see what we are doing here First thing first, we are getting the PDF. So when you run this uh, piece of code, the Llama 2 PDF is being downloaded and it is downloaded in this Google Colab site here. And we just pass the path. And this is the main piece of code here. By the way, the same piece of code can also be used in order to extract the images also from the PDF. This is out of that scope. Uh, but in the future, I might even create those videos where you can extract the information let's say there is pdf there is uh, text and there is tables so we can extract all the things and get answer out of it and then yeah when you run this uh, line of code it will download some of the models as you can see here uh, we are using the layout model yolo x uh, to get the bounding boxes for the tables and find the titles right this is how it works behind the scene and we are saying extract images in PDF false for now because we don't want to go through the images part. And in for table is structure is true. And we want to chunking strategies by title. So we want to chunk by the titles. So yeah, these are the normal things. You can play around with this. But one thing that you need to notice is it will take some time to run this. And it might even throw some error if you are running in Google Colab, the runtime issues. If you get in those issues, you can go to this runtime here. And disconnect and delete the runtime or again you can restart the runtime whatever you want to do but you might need to run a couple of times that's what i faced but it might be only me but just a reminder there once this is done everything now is uh, in this raw pdf elements very all right what we can do now is we can use this partition pdf we have this Category counts, we are just creating a dictionary to store the count of each type because we have now tables, we have now text and so on, right? So what we are doing here is just going through the elements, these raw PDF elements, and we are just seeing here, okay, 
category is string type element and if category in this we are doing this if not into that and kind of things and when we do all different things we now have 120 composite element so what does composite element means it's just the aggregated chunks right and now we have 47 tables and table chunk is two that's how it works and now we are just taking the pi base model here and saying okay type is a string and what we are doing here is categorized by type so we go through the element here as you can see here we are just taking the for loop and if there is something we are just going to the table and the text and appending to that and now this is the tables and this is the text if you run this piece of code now we have 49 tables and then we have 120 text so if you just go here this makes sense because we have 120 which is the composite element and 47 plus 2 table table meaning that there is 49 now the next part is how to use the multi-vector retrievers you can go through the links here which points to the documentation but the main thing here is we are now going to summarize the things so we import the necessary modules from langchain and by the way i have already created a video about langchain hop if you are new you can watch that video or this links takes you there so we can already take some of the some of the prompts from there and use directly without ourselves specifying things it's easier right so i'm just taking this hop.pool rlm multi-vector retriever summarization and what it does is it just summarizes the things right for that now we need to have the open ai things so we I install here OpenAI. After that, you need to provide the OpenAI API key. Go to this link, get your API keys, paste it here. I'm going to revoke this after I create this video. So no problem, I'm showing you how to do these things. And by the way, I'm also using the LangSmith here. If you are new to LangSmith, what we can do is we can have the traces being registered in the LangSmith so that we know what is happening behind the scene when we run some queries into the large language models you can watch my videos i have created many videos related to langsmith but this is how you can pass the things into the project uh, which you get from the langsmith you need to get access to that so you can go through the process and what we do now is just pass the prompt so here we have the prompt and we create the chat prompt template and there is the summary chain we are using gpt uh, this is by the way gpt4 yeah gpt4 uh, i tried with gpt4 as well as gpt 3.5 turbo but it seems that we don't get that uh, much of nice information or good results out of gpt 3.5 i was using gpt4 so if you have gpt4 assist that's fine otherwise you can just give a try with gpt 3.5 it depends if you get answer or not i'll show you what the answer i got we using both of these and then there is this summarize chain we just pass the things here and apply to the tables so this is how we can apply the tables and apply to the text this is how you can apply the text this also might take some time and you might get the rate limits that's what i get and you need to wait some time or if if the open ai does not allow you you need to help ask the help or support from the open ai for that but for me i waited for some time and then it works that's just a reminder and now after we do all these things what we need to do now is we need to add that to the vector store what we are using here in memory store stores the raw text as well as the tables and in the vector store we store the embedded summaries for that we need to install chroma db and tick token so you can just run this shell and now we are just importing some things here necessary modules and here this is the vector store i'm using the chroma and you can just give the collection name summaries we are using OpenAI embeddings for that. And the store, as I said before, the storage layer for the parent documents is in the in-memory store. And we are just giving the ID key as doc ID. And we use all these informations to create the retriever. What is the retriever? As I said before, it's the multi-vector retriever. And we pass the vector store. Doc store is store and the ID is ID, which we just created here once that is passed now our vector store is being created and we can do for the text as well as the tables into it so if you run this piece of code it will do all the things for you 
now we created our vector store the last thing is we get the information from the multi vector retriever pass that to the llm and get the result out right so yeah there is the rag uh, from a uh, line chain expression language as i said you before also if you want to know more here is the link uh, for the official documentation please refer to that but we are just importing some of the things from Langchain again here is the prompt template this is the template we created the prompt out of it and there is the model you can play around with different models i'm using gpt4 here and this is the chain you provide the context there is the prompt there is the model and the string output parser we just want to provide this and now it's ready we can ask the questions now into this particular pdf which we went through different processes okay so now we can ask the questions right so first i asked here chain dot in book what is the number of training tokens for llama 2 so it provides the answer okay llama 2 was pre-trained on 2 million tokens which is true so you can also view this information from the trace also to see which chunks it take into consideration when answering this question right the next one i asked here chain dot invoke what is the average tokens in prompt for stanford shp so it says here 338.3 is the answer where did i ask the question from so this is the part in the pdf where i was asking the questions so here as you can see here is the stand for shp and i was asking the questions average number of tokens but you need to be careful here i'm asking the average tokens in prompt and it says 338 right so if you go back so average tokens in prompt 338 but it is providing the answer of average tokens for example so you can see it's not that accurate in some of the cases but then i ask the next question here it says here okay what is the average tokens in response for uh, meta it says two three four so i was asking average tokens in response right so if you go to the pdf so here is the average tokens uh, in response and for the meta it is two three four point one and in this case we get the right answer two three four point one and by the way i did the same thing with 3.5 turbo but with 3.5 turbo it just provided the random answer here 31.4 as you can see here for gpt 3.5 turbo the same question gives different answer which is not correct if you want to go through into the logs also and then i asked here what is the pre-training data so it provided me the answer and the answer is correct and it even shows what is the trace of it so for viewing the trace so this is the traces that I have I'm getting from this particular run. So as you can see here, I'm asking some questions and it is providing me the answer here. So let's say that I'm asking the questions. What is the pre-training uh, question? What is the pre-training data? So if I make this little bit bigger, I can go to this runnable parallel and here it says the context and it goes through. OK, figure four and it went down. There is 2.1 pre-training data. So if you go to 2.1 pre-training data in the chunks, let me go to the PDF from here. I can search here pre-training. So if I go to pre-training, it's still four, but if I go up into the 2.1, let me see where it is, yeah, here. So two pre-training and it went to 2.1 pre-training and the answer is from here. This is really good way how you can trace the things and you can already visualize the chunks from the language speed so you don't need to go through your paper or whatever you are using the files in order to use uh, the rack application from here you can quickly see okay what is the chunk it is referring to is it making good decision or bad decision and so on and from here there are many things you can see okay what is the question and what is the ai answering here and if you go here you can give the feedback the metadata is here so you know which model you are using and so on right so the other questions also what i was asking here as i said you before so let me go here okay i said here what is the number of training tokens for llama 2 so it says okay two trillion tokens and i can go here and see okay from where it is getting the information if you scroll a little bit down it is taking from different chunks so it says 2.2 training details it is taking from that particular thing and if you scroll a little bit down it is also going through the table 25 and so on you can go and say okay is it actually getting the information out of it or not or is the answer correct the answer is correct we also see that okay it is also taking from the tables and so on you can just go here and play around with different questions and good 
part of this is also that with the Lang Smith you can see the traces also okay from where it is getting the information. This is somehow already a better approach than before where we just have the PDFs and we only deal with the with the text. Although in in the previous approach also where we don't use this OCR and things, it is still doing the chunking part. But then what happens is there is one table and maybe in one chunk there is just little bit of the table part and it splits into different chunks and it didn't get the information quite there. But with this approach what we are doing is we are taking the table separately and the text separately and we are getting the information out of it which is more accurate and also with the help of this language speed we can trace from where the answer is coming from. So yeah we are getting more and more advanced uh, topics into this and Langchain is providing really good way how to deal with these kind of things. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new and yeah, you can just explore and see if you get a right answer out of it or not. If yes, then you can use this. That's good for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.